Hi, welcome to Dave Takes It On. It's Friday. Time to find out what's happening here and around the world. Well, isn't it amazing that those who, well, shall we say, don't like EVs will grab any tiny little hint or lie that they get from the sensational media that says the industry is in decline and they leap onto it with both feet. Well, a recent headline said EV sales to private buyers is falling drastically and it's only the fleet buyers that's saving it from totally collapsing. Well, first, let's just separate data from opinion. The data does show a large drop in sales to private buyers and a massive increase in sales to commercial and leasing companies. Totally agree. So is this the end of private buyers? Well, quite possibly it is. And I really can't blame them. If I decided to buy a new Tesla Model 3 from their website and put down £9,000 deposit and pay back over 48 months, I will pay £770 a month. If I choose to lease that car over 48 months as a private citizen, same deposit, I'll pay £464 a month. Can you see the attraction of leasing yet? But, and this is a huge but, if my employer will offer me a salary sacrifice lease, I can get exactly the same car for £300 a month as quoted on the Electric Car Scheme Twitter article. So, have a wild guess how people are getting their new EVs today. Yep. More and more are not buying, but they're leasing, either privately or through their employer. But why lease? Well, some people are scared they're buying an untried, untested technology. They aren't, and they don't want to commit. Some still worry the battery will collapse after three years and they'll be stuck with a £50,000 bill to replace it. They won't. Others feel there's new technology just around the corner and they'll be lumbered with an out-of-date technology. There isn't, and they won't. So leasing answers all of these and more. Battery worries? Doesn't matter, it's covered by the warranty during the lease. Then just hand it back, it's not your problem. Old technology? Hand it back and get the latest. New tech just launched? Well, just wait a few more months, then you'll get it. Leasing is looking really attractive for many motorists. So back to the data. Absolutely the data shows less people are buying EVs. But it does not say less people are driving new EVs. That would be an incorrect opinion. Data also shows there's a huge, massive 50% growth of EV sales year over year, over the last 12 months. Well, for those who don't know, if you lease a car, the leasing company buys that car from the manufacturer, which it then owns and leases to you. That is a commercial or leasing sale counted by the manufacturer. Private sales are down, commercial and leasing sales are massively up. But many of these commercial sales are actually for employees. Net result, more people are driving EVs. Well, the growth of EV charging installations is humongous. I'm not exaggerating. Everywhere I go, and I get about a lot, I'm seeing new installations everywhere. Well, sorry, there are exceptions. I recently went down to Chelmsford in Essex to film. As usual, I put in my hotel postcode, looked on the maps like ZapMap to see what's around within a 50 mile range. And in Essex, I was appalled. There was almost nothing other than single and double charges by the likes of Instavolt or Mer and Podpoint, plus a few sites with maybe four or six charges with the likes of Osprey. But there was grid serve in Braintree, 12 miles away, was the only notable exception. Is that it for Essex? I checked on my Tesla display, display and I found 12 V3, 250 kilowatt charges in Chelmsford, 6 down at Braintree, 12 just outside Colchester. I haven't counted, but I suspect Tesla has more charges in Essex than all the others combined. But even the Tesla offerings offering three superchargers were not what I'm used to. Up here in Preston in the wild northwest, I have a few more. In fact, I have nine chargers within 50 miles, four of them open to all EVs, and they're averaging more than 12 charges per location within that 50 miles, and four new ones under construction, probably mostly V4s, open to all, and that includes 24 V3 charges at Birch Services, opening before Christmas, I visited last night, and 15 at Walton Summit, just off the M6, only about two miles away, also opening before Christmas. There's a ridiculous distribution of charges. Well, obviously I don't use these being so close to home, but with prices down as low as 25p off peak, if you don't have home charging, these are a dream. Well, I'm sure Essex will catch up in time. 
There was also a new trend appearing that I first noticed in Stoke-on-Trent. Well, Tesla's owners down there who couldn't charge at home for years found their nearest supercharger was at Keel Services on the M6. This meant they had to drive from home to the Junction 15, jump on the motorway northbound for about four miles, charge the car, but then they had to carry on heading north on the M6 up to Junction 16 where they did a U-turn. Well, no, not on the motorway, at the roundabout over the junction at Junction 16. Then they headed south back to Junction 15, then headed home. When Trentham Gardens opened, to non-Tesla drivers as well, that journey now avoided the motorway altogether. Well, same at T-Bay where you can access the motorway services from the local A and B roads. You can drive legally from northbound to southbound without going on the motorway, but you can leave the services directly onto the motorway if you choose. Same applies at Birch Services Supercharger on the M62, where there is a road from the nearest village directly into the services. Now this is really welcome. If I'm driving down the motorway and need to charge, it makes no difference to me whatsoever if I pull into a services 200 yards off the motorway or 200 yards the other side of a roundabout at the end of the slip road. But it makes a huge difference to those who live really close and can't charge at home. Well, I learned four things from talking to the workers at Birch Services, M60, uh, M62 eastbound, that were connecting the 12 V3 chargers to the grid to go live before Christmas. Well, first, these guys get around. They'd recently been to Luton installing Tesla V4s, Torquay installing four BP pulls, and mentioned several other locations. They are really, really busy. Well, second, I learned that the 11,000 volt local electricity supply, if you want to know about this, check out my grid video linked below, is effectively a huge ring main, like in your house. And at Birch, it ran past it just a few hundred yards away. There was already a substation which supplied the old services. That was supplied by a spur. That was a single cable off that ring main. But that spur did not have enough power to supply the 12 Tesla V4s and six brand new GridServe 350 kilowatts that are being installed there. So they had to apply for a license from the DNO. Charges were installed while they waited and they are the old V3s. No longer fitted, so they've been waiting for a while. But interesting, once they got the license, they have a maximum of 21 days by, set by Ofgem to connect and get them working. They took a separate spur, single cable, from the ring main, installed their own substation running at 11,000 volts. Alongside that, they installed a transformer to drop that down to a nominal 433 volts, three phase. Third thing I learned, Tesla require 480 volts at the chargers. GridServe and BP Pulse only require 450. Which well, is switchable at the transformer. And then fourth thing I learned was one of the workers was thinking about an EV, had many doubts. Well, tell me about it. And I chatted with him for a while and he revealed his car averages 26 miles per gallon. Well, don't the EV brigade always quote that they've got a Golf GTI 15 years old, they get 85 miles to the gallon, making it cheaper than an EV? Well, at more than £7 a gallon, that gives 26 miles per gallon the cost of 27 pence a mile. Charging at one of the V3s they were connecting, off peak would cost them around 8 to 10 p a mile. He was stunned. Well, VW go from crisis to crisis and not just with their EVs, which are losing out really big time. Sales of ICE cars are up, but they're still in negotiation with unions about shutting down factories and laying off up to 20,000 workers. Well, silver lining and all that, someone should tell them there'll be vacancies at the nearby Giga Berlin, I'm sure. But what is going on? I know their EV sales have absolutely tanked, but their ice sales rose, so why the panic and why the job cuts? It seems they're running around like headless chickens, this way, that way, try this, do that. Someone needs to get a good hold of the direction they're going in and steer them there. Well, maybe Tesla, BYD and Xpeng, with just a handful of models each and a few variants, is the way forward. See, the VW group is a behemoth with over a dozen current models, each of which comes in an eye-watering number of variations, engine sizes, trim, technology. And then add in that they also own Audi, Seat, Cupra, Porsche and many others. And all of those have got more than a dozen models and many of them have got an equal number of variants. 
it's almost hand-making every individual car. Tesla currently has four models, each with a maximum of three variants. BYD has five models, again, each with only two or three variants. No wonder VW is having problems. But what about that growth and profit? Yeah, what about it? Look also at their debt, which has grown from more than 89 billion in 2017 to more than double at 196 billion today, and on a decidedly upward trend. Well, I'm not sure if that's dollars, euros, or pounds. Pff, hardly matters at this level. So they project a profit of 22 billion for 2023. Probably won't reach it, but the debt has risen by 12 billion. How does that work? Well, Lucid launched their new Gravity. Prices start from about 80,000. This model might make it over to the UK. Looks really good. Lotus launched the Electra, a car only slightly larger than Model Y and with lesser performance, starting at 89,000. Nice looking. It'll definitely sell, but how many? Talking of how many, launch of the year, General Motors, owners of Cadillac, launched the Celestique with prices starting from $340,000. Starting from? Where to end up? Well, add in all the factory options and a dozen or so speciality, and there's already one model on offer, $975,000. Where's my chequebook? Well, the UK charging market seems to be polarising. BP Pulse announced they were buying Tesla V4 chargers, the very latest models on offer. Any bets on the price being 85 pence plus a transaction fee? But now so is EG, Eurogroup, who offer EV Point, as at Rivington Services on the, M on the M61. They're Bolton. For full review of that site is due out soon. But we praised it for their price of 65p, which for a previous petrol group is quite reasonable. MFG, Motor Fuels Group, another similar group, charge either 79 or 85 in some locations. EV Point is the cheapest, ignoring Tesla, which offer off-peak, hovering around 35p mark, of all the other networks, if you exclude any offers or memberships. I'm looking forward to seeing the first of these installed. Oh, by the way, thank you to all those who email us with pictures and videos. They are most welcome. We are finding keeping up with all the installations quite challenging. If any viewers see one about to start, already started or just completed and opened and you can get a few photos or video, we would love to hear from you. Pace of installations in some areas is ferocious. Get in touch via email, please. Dave takes it on at gmail.com. Details down below or in the comments. Now, if enough of you keep us up to date, we might be able to launch a UK map showing new upcoming EV charger installations as they happen. Now, we're not going to compete with ZapMap, but a live update of new installations would be really useful. It would also help me in knowing where to go and film. Well, F1 finally returned to Las Vegas for an almighty spectacular. The strip was closed and barriers erected to make a really exciting circuit. Street was over one mile long, taken absolutely flat out at over 200 mile an hour. Now, there was a major event that could have been a disaster and it spoiled the race for at least one driver. Carlos Sainz and his Ferrari sped down the straight in first practice and the suction caused by the aerodynamic downforce they operate lifted a welded down steel manhole cover which destroyed a good portion of his underneath of his car. It's a miracle he was unhurt. The circuit was immediately closed while all the other covers were checked. Well, it seems the cover was welded correctly but the frame was merely concreted in and it was the concrete that had failed. Carlos unfortunately had to abide by the rules and take a 10 place grid penalty for installing a new engine and gearbox, spoiling any chances he had of winning after coming second in qualifying. While well, the others were modified, all the manholes, and the race went ahead. Plenty of action, but Max took yet another victory, setting a new record for wins in a season. Well, grid connected battery storage is the exciting new industry. They're being installed everywhere, well, even here in the UK. Obviously Tesla are installing more than anyone else in the world at this stage, having almost single-handedly started the industry. But the market is absolutely huge and wide open to all. More the merrier. Australia one weekend recently produced over 126% of all its electricity from solar and wind, 100% renewable, and much of the excess would have been stored for future use. It is the way forward. Now, the NRMA, National Roads and Motorists Association Australia, which offers insurance, loans, breakdown cover and discounts to members, have just released data 
showing that less than 2% of all EVs up to 10 years old have their batteries replaced. And up to 95% of those removed are recycled. Well, that's a very different story from batteries lasting three years and then being dumped in landfill to pollute the, pollute the earth. I am re researching a video on used EVs at the moment. Are they worth buying? Good value at present? What about the batteries? Well, please subscribe so that you can be notified when it launches. Well, I couldn't complete this week's news without a mention of the largest firework in the world. Yes, yeah, SpaceX launched their Starship, the one that will eventually take mankind to Mars to live and work. It lasted eight minutes, this time much longer than last time. Then it had what they call a rapid, unscheduled disassembly of parts. Now, it blew up. I have huge admiration for Elon with this. I don't know, let's just launch it and see what breaks first, then fix that attitude. Well, eventually, all the fixes will be done and it will work. That worked brilliantly for the Falcon 9 and the Falcon Heavy, which today are regular flyers and the only method of getting crew to and from the ISS. By the way, for those of you who don't know, the Falcon here is based on Star Wars Millennium Falcon and the plaid on the S and X is from the film Spaceballs, where they said the only speed faster than ludicrous is plaid. Or maybe he watches too many sci-fi films, but I really wish it all the best. We need characters like him. In fact, we need lots of them. And finally, for all those who commented on my charging session at the GridServe hub at Braintree, me in shirt sleeves and blue skies, yeah, metadata shows it was filmed at GridSurf Hub Wednesday the 15th of November, last week. The sky was pure blue, the sun was really quite powerful, and the temperature was a chilly 11 degrees. But definitely shirt sleeves. Thanks for watching. I'm Dave.